Hey everyone, it's Mostly Casual Commander. I'm BK. We're on Discord and Instagram. Links are in the description. Kyle's playing Clavelino, First of the Blessed. This is where Vampire Tribal meets Aristocrats. He'll kill his own vampires, making big old demons. Next up, we have Chris playing Hakbal of the Surging Soul. This is Merfolk Tribal, focused on Explore. Next up, I'm playing Admiral Brass, Unsinkable. It's Pirate Tribal, focused on ETB triggers and treasure production. And finally, we have Matt playing Pantlaza, Sun Favored, Dinosaur Tribal, with better Cascade? Maybe not better, but just is pretty good. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and stick around for an appearance from my fat cat Meatball. He's so chunky. Kyle kicks things off by playing a Windbrisk Heights hideawaying something underneath that bad boy. On to Chris's turn he plays a tapped path of ancestry and then he says go over to me and I play a tapped path of ancestry. Before passing the turn over to Matt he draws and plays a plains as his land into a turn one soul ring. Classic Matt. He then passes the turn over to Kyle he plays a Swamp as his land. Kyle then casts Dusk Legion Zealot. When that ETBs, he'll lose a life and draw a card. Must be nice. Over to Chris's turn two, he plays an Island as his land before casting Merfolk Branch Walker. When he casts it, he gets a Scry thanks to Path of Ancestry. He decides to leave that right on top. Then when that entered the battlefield, he'll explore. He reveals the card he just scryed, gets a plus one counter on Merfolk Branch Walker and leaves that card on top. Afterwards, I use my Path of Ancestry to cast Spyglass Siren, and I get a Scry thanks to Path of Ancestry. I'll leave that bad boy right on top. I also get a map token when Spyglass entered the battlefield. I sacrifice the map token to have Spyglass Siren explore one, so I'll reveal the card I described. It's an icon of Ancestry, and I feel like that'll be pretty decent if I'm able to play that card. On to Matt's turn, he plays Cliff Top Retreat, entering the battlefield untapped. Then he passes the turn to Kyle. He plays Shine Shadow Snarl, and he reveals a Plains, which Chris inspects thoroughly. Afterwards, Kyle casts his commander, Clavelino, First of the Blessed. He then goes into combat, triggering his commander, making his Dusk Legion Zealot have the ability to turn into a big scary demon if it dies. Chris takes his beats, and then onto his turn, he plays an Island as his land before casting Merfolk Cave Diver. This thing gets bigger whenever something explores, and it can't be blocked. He then scries, thanks to Path of Ancestry, moves to combat, picking away at Matt's life total, dropping him to 37. Onto my turn, I draw that Icon of Ancestry and play Gaia Reach Sanitarium as my land for turn, before casting it. So now my pirates are bigger, and I can probably get one off the top of the library. Onto Matt's turn, he draws and plays a forest as his land, before casting his commander, Pantlaza Sun Favored. When that ETBs, he discovers X, where X equals 4 in this case, finds a Farseek off the top, so he'll go and find a Stomping Ground, having that enter the battlefield tapped. Afterwards, he passes, and onto Kyle's turn 3, he'll draw and play a Swamp as his land for turn before moving into combat at Chris. Chris decides again not to block, dropping to 38. And in main phase 2, Kyle casts a Sorcery Speed, Corrupted Conviction, which will kill his Dusk Legion Zillet dead, getting him a 4-3 Flying Demon, and he gets to draw a card off of that, plus two cards off of the instant. Then he drops Master of Dark Rites. It's like a bad dark ritual on a stick, but it's a sack outlet. As a follow-up, he plays Wayfarer's Bubble, but this one's from Ixalan. He passes the turn over to Chris, who draws and plays a Forest as his land, before casting his commander, Hawkball of the Surging Soul. Now when he moves to combat, all of his merfolk will explore, and he does so now. So, for his merfolk branch walker, he reveals a card, and then puts that to the bin. Moving down the line, his next merfolk explores, and he puts a land to his hand, and finally Hawkball explores, keeping that card on top before moving to combat at Kyle. Kyle will take his beats, and then Chris passes the turn over to me. I play a Sunken Hollow as my land for turn, and then cast Reckless Fireweaver, hoping to make a bunch of treasures in short order and start pinging down my opponents. I scry off of Path of Ancestry because it's a human. Chris gets attacked by my dude, and he drops to 35. Over to Matt's turn, he plays Game Trail, revealing a mountain, and then he casts Itali, Primal Storm. And when that enters the battlefield, his commander will trigger, so he'll discover six. He'll dig down off the top of his library until he found a Raging Swordtooth, 
When that enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to each creature, killing Kyle's Master of Dark Rites. Matt then moves into combat, swinging his commander at me. I take my beats, drop to 36. Over to Kyle's turn, he plays New Blood. Kyle and Chris work out a deal, whereby Kyle is going to take control over Matt's Atali, so long as Chris deals with Matt's commander. Kyle moves into combat, he swings his commander at me. On the attack, it triggers, so he targets itself. I block with Fireweaver, and they bounce off of each other. In his second main phase, Kyle plays Bajuka Bog, targeting Chris's graveyard and exiling all the stuff. Then he passes the turn over to Chris, who draws, and he'll play Hinterland Harbor as his land for turn, entering the battlefield untapped. He then casts Vodalian Hexcatcher. So now his merfolk are bigger merfolk, and I mean, maybe he'll counter a spell with it. He casts Benthic Biomancer as a follow-up play. That'll force him to loot whenever a creature of his gets a plus one counter. He moves into combat, his commander triggers, and so he'll go down the line, starting with his Benthic Biomancer. So he reveals a Herald of the Secret Streams. He'll draw that and discard a card. He then explores and reveals a Growth Spiral on the top of his library. He just keeps that revealed as he goes down the line and has each one of his creatures explore, therefore getting plus one plus one counters on them. And having explored, his Merfolk Cave Dyer gets pretty big, and he swings at myself and Kyle dropping us down to 30 and 27. Chris passes the turn. On my turn, I play an island as my land, and then I cast my commander, Admiral Brass, Unsinkable. When she enters the battlefield, I'll go ahead and mill four cards, and I'm keeping my fingers crossed that I mill at least a pirate or three. And that way, when I move into combat, Admiral Brass will allow me to reanimate one as a 4-4 with a finality counter on it. I do find a couple of pirates, the best target being a Corsair Captain. So I move into combat, and Admiral Brass triggers. I'll reanimate the Corsair Captain as a 4-4. When it enters the battlefield, it'll go ahead and make me a treasure token, which triggers my Reckless Fireweaver, pinging each one of my opponents for one. Afterwards, I'll move into combat, attacking Chris with my Spyglass Siren with Evasion, and presenting a trade for Matt in the form of my Corsair Captain versus his Sword Tooth. He doesn't take it. On Matt's turn, he plays a forest, and then casts Cultivate. It's as if, though, this deck wants to ramp. Then he finds a forest, putting it onto the battlefield, and a plains going into his hand. Following that, he casts Scion of Calamity. This thing's a 5-5 with Myriad. It triggers his commander when it enters the battlefield, so he'll discover 5. He sadly has to discover through a fancy Gishath, but he does find a Thrashing Brontodon. That enters the battlefield for free, and he could use it later to destroy a thing, maybe. After that, he moves into the red zone, swinging his sword tooth at me for some reason. And then I take the beats, dropping to 25. He passes over to Kyle. He moves right into the red zone himself, triggering his commander. Targets Atali with it, because remember, it's a vampire now. On the attack, Atali triggers, and each of the top cards of his opponent's libraries are exiled. He gets to cast them for free. He has a pretty big score in the form of a Sky Marcher, Aspirant, Azure Fleet Admiral, Growth Spiral, and a Descendant's Path. Not bad. So he adds another vampire to his army. He becomes the Monarch, as well as gets to draw a card, playing an extra land for casting Amalia. Hey, she's a 2-2 with Ward for two manas. That's not bad. The rest of her text probably doesn't matter ever. Then he drops Voldaren Estate, followed by a Bloodgast. Bloodgast is a great target for his commander's ability, and then kill it repeatedly. He then casts an Arcane Signet. After that, he moves into his end step, and now that he's the Monarch, he'll get to draw an extra card. He also cracks his Wayfarer's Bubble in order to go and find another land entering the battlefield tapped. It was a Plains. On to Chris's turn, he draws. Then he drops another Island as his land for turn, before casting Wave Goodbye. I get it. Oh, it's a wave. So everything that doesn't have a plus one counter on it returns to its owner's hand. Joke's on you, Chris. I got a creature with a plus one counter. He then moves into combat, so his commander will trigger. So, once again, he starts exploring his way through all of his merfolk creatures. He sequences the triggers in a slightly different way than he has done previously. So he starts exploring off the top of his library, getting a few plus one counters along the way, as well as a few lands to his hand. And again, every time one of his creatures is exploring, his merfolk cave diver also triggers, getting plus one plus oh, and can't be blocked. He moves into combat, swinging at each one of his opponents. Because he attacked with his commander, it also triggered, letting him drop a land onto the battlefield tapped. He deals a ton of damage to each one of his opponents before snatching up that Monarch token from Kyle. He moves to his end step, drawing off of it. And then onto my turn, I play another island as my land and then cast my Corsair Captain once again. So then that ETBs gives me another treasure, which I then use to help me cast Admiral Brass. 
When she enters the battlefield, I will once again mill four cards off the top of my library after scrying with Path of Ancestry. So I mill the top four and find two pirates in the form of a hostage taker as well as a coercive recruiter. I then move into combat, triggering Admiral Brass, and I get that coercive recruiter onto the battlefield as a 4-4. I steal Chris's Merfolk Branchwalker. His other creatures don't really do much for me, so I just try to deal him extra damage. So I do so and drop him to 18, taking that Monarch token, and I keep a few blockers up because I'm kind of afraid of the crackback from Chris. Afterwards, I draw from Monarch on my end step and pass to Matt, who plays a Plains, and then he recasts his commander, Pantlaza, Sun Favored. So he'll go ahead and discover four, and off the top he finds Itzquinth, Firstborn of Gishath, and casts that for free. When that entered the battlefield, Matt paid two, so he has damage dealt to one of Chris's creatures as well, killing it dead. As a follow-up, he casts Waita, Trainer Prodigy. He moves into combat and has Itzquinth attack Chris, dropping him to 16. On to Kyle's turn, his Descendant's Path will trigger, and sadly, because he has no vamps out, it goes to the bottom of his library. He plays a Plains as his land. He then casts four creatures. Now, he shortcutted this. Obviously, one of them hits the stack at a time. Amalia, Bloodgast, Skymarcher, and his commander re-enter the battlefield. He does have the City's Blessing as well, so his Sky Marcher has flying. He then passes back to Chris, who plays a Temple of the False God as his land for turn, and then that Herald of Secret Streams hits his battlefield. Now all of his creatures with plus one plus one counters on them can't be blocked. That's pretty good. He then casts Voral of the Hall Clade, and next turn that thing could be used to terrifying effect. He moves into combat, so his commander will trigger once again, and he starts exploring down the line of his merfolk army yet again. Found a Deep Root Elite, and just leaves it on top for all of his creatures to explore into, therefore getting plus one counters. Then he draws it off of his Benthic Biomancer. He moves into combat with unblockable stuff, dealing tons of damage to myself and Matt. It was enough for me to get knocked out of the game. And so I'll clean up my board state. Chris moves to his end step and draws a card off of the Monarch before Matt's turn starts. He draws for turn, and then he plays a Mountain as his land. He casts his Atali, Primal Storm. This will have him discover six, and he finds a Xenagos, God of Revels, off the top of his library. Must be nice. He then casts Scion of Calamity. Again, a 5-5 with Myriad, and that can be pretty scary with his Xenagos out. And as he moves into combat, he targets the Scion of Calamity with Xenagos, but Chris has a response in the form of Rapid Hybridization, so he gets a 3-3 Frog Lizard. On Kyle's turn, his enchantment procs, but he finds a land, not a vampire. He then casts Forerunner of the Legion, and when that enters the battlefield, he'll go and find a vampire. In this case, it's a Sanctum Seeker, and he'll get to put that on top of his library. Kyle then moves into combat, Swinging Amalia, Bloodgast, and Sky Marcher at Chris. Chris declares blocks with Voral against Bloodgast, and before damage is dealt, Kyle activates his Windbrisk Heights. It ignores timing restrictions, so Crossway Troublemakers gives all of his attacking vampires Death Touch and Lifelink. Therefore, Bloodgast trades with Voral. Kyle gains a bunch of life, going to 19. And because he dealt damage to Chris, he'll also snatch up that Monarch token. Play to Plains as his land for turn and Blood Gas triggers from the graveyard, entering the battlefield once again. Onto Chris's turn, he draws and then plays a Forest as his land for turn. He then casts Deep Root Elite. He'll be able to throw around some plus one plus one counters whenever another Merfolk enters the battlefield. He then casts Tributary Instructor, so when that ETBs, it'll trigger Deep Root Elite, and he puts a plus one plus one counter on his Benthic Biomancer, drawing and discarding. He then moves into combat. His commander will trigger, so he'll start exploring all of his merfolk. He found a land from his first explore trigger, and then put that to hand. Then he found a non-land card, and therefore he kept it on top, giving all of his merfolk plus one plus one counters as they explore. Merfolk Cave Diver is also triggering each time he explores, getting plus one plus O. Oh. Then he moves into combat, swinging at Kyle and Matt with enough damage to knock both of them out of the game, making him the winner. Congratulations, buddy. And as promised, here's Meatball! He's so chunky!
And there you have it, that's the game. We had a ton of fun playing these upgraded pre-con decks from Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Let us know what you thought about the game in the comments. What are you most excited about for the new set? Please subscribe if you haven't already, and as always, thanks for watching.